Right now on Sunrise, 10 months after George Floyd's death, eyes around the world are once again on Minneapolis as opening statements begin in Derek Chauvin's trial. We're live downtown with what to expect in court and how long this process could last. For many, including George Floyd's family, it's a test of the criminal justice system. There's a time for change and that change is now. Their message to the world before the opening gavel. Plus, a possible answer to what started this pandemic. Health experts explain how the virus was transmitted to humans. Yes, it could be the warmest day of the season, but winds and fire danger will be the biggest story today. I'll let you know how the rest of the week is shaping up in the next seven. And they're giving emotional support to Twin Cities community who needs it the most. How one organization is amplifying the voices of people of color and helping them feel at home. It's Monday, March 29th. Here 11 Sunrise starts now. After months of preparation and weeks of jury selection, opening statements in Derek Chauvin's trial and George Floyd's murder start this morning. We've got team coverage on this historic trial, breaking down everything you need to know. Yeah, but first, let's check in with Guy for a quick check of the weather. Hey, Guy. Hey, you know, red flag warnings plus a wind advisory will go both go in effect at noon. Wind advisory will expire at 9 o'clock tonight. We could see winds gusting up to 50 miles per hour. Red flag warning will go in effect at noon as well. That lifts tomorrow morning uh, at Tuesday morning at 1 a.m. So wee hours there of the morning. You can see pretty much widespread impacting the entire state. Camera already bobbing around out there in the wind at 40. It feels like 31 once you factor in winds from the south at about uh, 16 miles per hour. Already things breezy out there. 16 to 25 miles per hour there in the Marshall area. Your school day forecast looks sunny, but again, windy and temperatures possibly hitting the first 70 degree temperature of the season today. Exciting. Thank you, Guy. All right, looking great on the roads. Green uh, all around the maps this morning. No crashes, no delays. We will check some drive times coming up. Eyes around the world are on Minneapolis this morning. Opening statements begin in the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. It comes 10 months after a viral video showed him kneeling on the back of George Floyd's neck and ultimately Floyd's death. We do have team coverage this morning with Jennifer Austin here in studio and Kaya Edwards live in downtown Minneapolis. Kaya, what can we expect from today's opening statements? Good morning. Opening statements are expected to last uh, most of the day, if not all day, as attorneys lay out what all they plan to show over the course of the trial. It's really the prosecution's first chance to try to convince the jury to convict former officer Derek Chauvin, who faces three felony charges in connection to George Floyd's death. The defense is not required to do an opening, but will likely do so. After that, the state will start calling witnesses to the stand. The defense will cross examine, and then they'll switch. Both sides have hundreds of potential names to call. But the big question, will Chauvin testify? Michael Bryant, a legal expert not involved in this case, weighs in. The dangers on someone testifying are first if they open any doors. So you need to think, is there anything about my defendant that if I put them on the stand, they're going to be able to ask about? So the question is, is whether or not as a police officer, what he did was unreasonable. So you don't have the usual circumstance where the defendant's saying, I wasn't there or I wasn't involved. Yeah, so like I said, we're in for a long day. As far as the trial goes, Judge Peter Cahill says we're looking at two to four weeks, possibly longer. Coming up next half hour, we'll talk more about the jury. Back to you. Yeah, and for a long uh, couple of weeks, it seems like. Yeah. All right, Kaya, thank you. Chauvin is facing three charges. The first charge is second degree unintentional felony murder. And here are the here the state needs to prove Chauvin committed a felony in this case assault and that led to Floyd's death. The next charge is third degree depraved mind murder. The statute shows it's more about reckless behavior causing a death with an act eminently dangerous to others without regard for human life. And the third charge is second degree involuntary manslaughter. Okay, well, ahead of opening statements, George Floyd's family is making their message known. They held a prayer vigil last night at a church in South Minneapolis. They were joined by the Reverend Al Sharpton and attorney Ben Crum. The family views this case as a test of the criminal justice system. They want a conviction to set a precedent for, po for policing in America. There's a chance the jury may hear from Floyd's family during the trial, but they want their message known outside the courtroom, too, that this trial is about more than getting justice for George alone. I will be out here marching 
every day if I have to. The United States' ability to deal with police accountability is on trial. The family settled with the city of Minneapolis for a record $27 million. The Floyd family and their lawyer, Ben Crump, will speak this morning before the trial. We will also hear from George Floyd's brother this morning on the Today Show, which is, of course, right after sunrise. Yeah, it's going to be a really a busy morning and a busy next couple of weeks here in the city. Right. Jen, thanks. The unrest after George Floyd's death last year caught police off guard. Now the city is beefing up its public safety plan. For months now, city leaders have been planning Operation Safety Net. It supports nonviolent protests and hopes to prevent large scale violence and property damage. Phase two starts today with opening statements. Phase three will kick in during jury deliberations and phase four will be for the verdict. You'll also see more barricades and fencing around police precincts and more officers and National Guard's members on the streets. Well, 606 now, let's get a closer look inside the courtroom where the trial will take place. It's going to look different with COVID precautions. Everyone is required to wear a mask. Only one print reporter and one TV reporter are allowed in each day. Three cameras will stream the rest. One camera will show the podium where the prosecution and defense attorneys will argue their sides. The next shows Derek Chauvin sitting with his team. The third camera will show the judge and any witnesses being examined. No jury members will be shown on camera. And make sure to tune in to Kara Levin's coverage of this historic trial. We're bringing you inside access to the courtroom starting Monday today at 9 a.m. You can also watch our digital stream on Kara11.com or on the Kara 11 app. Now let's turn to the fight against the coronavirus. Here are three things you need to know. A World Health Organization study shows the origin of COVID most likely passed the virus from bats to humans through another animal who say a lab leak is extremely unlikely. Dr. Anthony Fauci says it's conceivable to send unvaccinated children to summer camps and playgrounds. He said elementary age kids will probably not get vaccinated until early 2022. And tomorrow, Minnesota is opening up vaccine eligibility to everyone 16 years and older. You still need an appointment to get your shot. We have links to the state's vaccine connector right now at care11.com. As we watch for that vaccine expansion tomorrow in Minnesota that Alicia is talking about, we want to check in on the latest COVID-19 infections. MDH reported yesterday more than 1,200 new cases after two consecutive days of new cases over 1,700. Now that is not helping with this two-week moving average the dotted line there. It is well above 1,000 cases per day right now. And we, are, we weren't seeing an average like that uh, since October. So we know five more people also reported to have died. Now we expect the vaccination efforts to grow faster after tomorrow's expansion. The latest numbers show more than 976,000 people who are fully vaccinated. You can see 1.5 million with at least a dose getting close to that 1.6 million. Now those with a dose, they make up 28.6% of the population, 5.6 million people. We also know that this green, there are more than 80% of those 65 and up. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. Centennial High School students are taking a stand against racism. A walkout is planned for this morning after a student says they received anti-Asian messages last week. It's ahead of a school board meeting tonight to discuss exactly what happened to the student. In a statement, the school says they investigated what happened and appropriate action is being taken. The district says they condemn all types of hatred and racism and will act on any situation. The pandemic and racial inequity in Minnesota were top of mind for Governor Walls in his state of the state address. On the COVID front, he says normalcy is on the horizon. The governor also has a message for Minnesotans as Derek Chauvin's trial gets underway. Please, Minnesotans, make your voices heard. Practice your First Amendment right, but please heed Dr. King's advice that nonviolence is the only way to truly move hearts and create lasting change. Republican Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka called the speech hopeful, but also asked the governor for clear guidance on when emergency powers will be lifted. Three Minnesota colleges are in the NCAA Frozen Four. Minnesota Duluth beat out North Dakota in the longest tournament game ever. It took five overtimes and two days to the Bulldogs to get that win. St. Cloud State and Minnesota State Mankato is also heading to the semifinals. Action picks back up Thursday, April 8th. It's the end of an era for Embers Restaurants. The last location in Fridley permanently closed Sunday. The first Embers restaurant opened back in 1956. As for what's to come, a developer bought the property and plans on tearing down the building. But there's talks of possibly opening another location. And that's your Monday Morning Rush.
Alicia, thank you. Guy, give us our one thing weather. Red flag warning will go in effect at noon. You'll see the counties in pink. Now burning not recommended there. Widespread wind advisory goes in effect at noon to 9 p.m. tonight. Winds could gust up to 50 miles per hour. A great Monday morning on the roads. No crashes, no delays to talk about. Everything's green and looking good. Drive times, we'll talk about those uh, after the break. Well, are you feeling the heavy weight of this trial? Tips on taking control of your stress as the proceedings play out. Yeah, in a state of emergency in Nashville, the new video of torrential flooding and the dramatic rescues as the water rises. If you're looking for a vacation rental, you better scope it out quick. The boom in online reservations is proving there's a light at the end of this pandemic tunnel. And Dr. Fauci says it could be possible to send your kids to camp this summer without a vaccination. Let us know how you're feeling about sending your kids to summer camp using the hashtag Sunrisers.